Tragedy strikes. Accidents happen. Be there when the calls come in. It's back-to-back -back episodes of Rescue 911. Next on Discovery Health Channel. This is 911. Do you have an emergency? Today on Rescue 911. Then, a shocking tragedy in the home. A toddler smashes through a plate glass window. Wait, Fred, she's bleeding very bad. Okay. And a frantic mother realizes her worst nightmare. Hey. Listen, is she breathing right now? She has breathing, yes, she has to cry. On Rescue 911. The everyday routine of our lives can provide comfort and pleasure, but it can also lead us to overlook certain dangers. That was never more true than on October 18, 1991, as Susan Tanner was taking care of her baby and her four-year-old daughter, Brittany, at their home in the suburbs of Fresno, California. It was lunchtime. I'm going to go call Daddy, okay? As they started to eat, I walked over to the telephone to dial Stan. Hello? My wife and I, we talk on the phone at least once a day. We usually call each other. Uh, the girls are just eating She lunch. was pregnant probably about eight months, There's seven or eight months at least. And that it should get us through this season and maybe next. Yeah, so it wasn't that big of a deal. No, I might go to the park later. No, actually, he said that our unit was fine. He said there's a small hairline fracture. Yeah, so it wasn't that big of a deal. Well, that's good. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> Susan. When I heard Susan. those screams, Susan. it just kind of made me curdle What's inside, that? like something was definitely wrong. Are you okay? She came back to the phone and Susan. said, "I got to call 911. Bye." What? And just Susan. left me hanging. Are you there? Claudia Fernandez had been a Fresno County dispatcher for three and a half years. I was like, oh my God, I never had anybody describe that to me over the phone. I couldn't believe it. Okay, listen to me, what I want you to do. Listen, is she breathing right now? Yeah, breathing, yes, yeah, she yeah, she's crying. Okay, she's crying? Oh, well, no, she's just kind of fidgeting. Okay. Wait, Fred, she's bleeding very bad. Okay, listen. The tremendous amount of blood that was coming out was so enormous that I didn't think uh, she would ever live through something like that. An ambulance that happened to be less than a mile from the house was immediately dispatched to the scene. Get a tower of cloth, okay, and apply direct pressure, all right? Okay. Wait, wait. Ma'am? Yes? Okay, the ambulance is on the way, okay? Okay. Is she still crying? Oh, she looks like she's getting white. Okay. The mother stated the girl was getting very pale, and that told me that she was losing a lot of blood and possibly going to go into shock any minute. She's really bleeding out. I mean, it's gushing. It's coming out everywhere. Okay, where's the big hole in her back? Hole in her back? I'm very scared. Okay, I know. I know you are. Okay, did you get a towel or a cloth? Yeah, there's a towel on her. Okay, I want you to apply direct pressure, okay? I want you to hold it with one hand and apply direct pressure. <laughs> for her right now, okay? How's her color looking now? Is she still real pale? Yeah, very. Mama, I'll help you, sweetheart. I love you so much. Hi. What'd she say? She said she loved me. Oh. The doctor's gonna come I just remember right thinking now. that that was kind of like a goodbye or that that was the last time that we would say that to each other. Within minutes of the call, 
the first rescue unit arrived. I was very worried about the little girl. I didn't know if she was going to make it or not. Among those who responded was American Ambulance Paramedic Ray Renard. Mom is covered in blood. This little girl was very sick. We mainly noted one injury to the back, the large gaping hole there, which showed intestines. Evisceration? Okay. Okay. Do you remember lifting her up or anything? There was approximately two to three cups of blood loss at the window site. Wait, did she fall all the way through yeah. the window? Kids can deteriorate very rapidly because they cannot handle that amount of blood loss. Okay, I'm going to hold wet dressings on you. You're going to feel this is going to be wet. I remember thinking that I was losing one child and um, having another one. And I didn't think that that was very fair. I didn't want to have to trade one for another. You're okay, Brittany. We asked Mom to ride along with us because we felt with the high anxiety or becoming emotionally upset, Mom might end up going into active labor. Just as the ambulance was leaving, Stan pulled up to the house. When I drove up to the house and saw Susan in the ambulance, I didn't have a chance to talk to her. And it was just the look that we had between each other that we knew something serious had happened. Four-year-old Brittany Tanner was taken to Valley Medical Center, where a trauma team was awaiting her arrival, led by Dr. Dean Gushy. I initially had told her who I was to try and make her at ease and tell her what was going to happen. Her injury was very clearly life-threatening. What we needed to do was to do all of the things necessary to get her to the operating room as rapidly as possible. Stan met up with his daughter at the hospital. It's hard for a father to see their daughter in a situation like that, where they can't really do anything. You're relying on somebody else to, to, you know, to make your girl feel better, when usually you're the one who, who picks them up and holds them when they have a hurt. And uh, the thought of having a, a life without Brittany, I can't even imagine what it'd be like. Um, not to be able to see her, you know, just come running up with her arms and throw her arms around you and, you know, say, I love you, Daddy. I can't imagine what it'd be like without her. Brittany underwent surgery to repair a lacerated colon. After two weeks, she was released from the hospital. Today, Brittany is back to her old feisty self. She is in gymnastics and swims and runs and is very, very active. I don't think anybody understands the amount of sorrow and sadness you feel until you come that close to losing a child. What scared me was falling. That's what scared me. I'm not going to put in that chair anymore. As soon as the accident happened, we had safety glass put in all of our windows. Go through your house and any windows that are in your house, especially windows that are within 18 inches of the floor, make sure they're tempered so that this doesn't happen to you. Recently, the Tanner family got a chance to meet the people who helped save their young daughter's life. As paramedics, we never get to see the outcome of our patients. It always feels good when you make a difference. I'm a very lucky girl. Thanks for helping me, everyone. <laughs>step inside the command center where the calls for help are answered and meet the real life heroes who save lives stay tuned for another episode of rescue 911 next on discovery health channel real life medicine miracles mr shapiro step out of the car please